Hi everyone, my name is Maria and I am the Green Stitcher here on YouTube and on Instagram and this is my first floss tube in English. Um, I'm not new to YouTube, I have a channel in Russian that I've been um, filming for for a few years now. Um, um, I've decided to also start a channel in English. I live in UK at the moment and English is my main language that I speak in my everyday life. Um, I also watch a lot of Flosstube and so I wanted to join the community, see how everything is here. Um, what I'm going to do today is, as my first video, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro, tell you a bit more about myself and then I'm going to show you my whips. Uh, I don't have too many, you'll see I don't really keep many whips going at, at one time, uh, but they're different, they're in different fabrics, different designers, and I hope you'll be interested to see this. Um, so first of all, a bit of an intro. Like I said, my name is Maria. I was born, uh, raised and went to uni in Belarus in Eastern Europe um, and uh, moved to UK about six years ago uh, to join my husband and his family here. Um, I've lived here in the same in the same city for for the whole time that I've been here. Um, I have been stitching for quite a while now. I think I started when I was at school. Uh, we do have sort of uh, crafts classes um, in, in your regular sort of middle and high school. Uh, I um, I did sort of little tiny kits with sort of puppies and, and kittens there. And then I think after I finished school and graduated from uni, um, so my degrees in linguistics and teaching Russian as a foreign language. And so I was placed to do um, two years as an English teacher. Um, and um, I think sort of being with the kids all day and being really sort of out there with other people and being an introvert made me want to have a hobby that lets me sort of just relax, sit down, do something by myself where no one talks to me and I do something with my hands and I've always loved crafts. Uh, I've tried sort of different things, uh, a bit of knitting, a bit of crochet and like I said cross stitch, sewing as well, I'll show you some of my things um, and so, so when I started working at a college I decided I needed to do something after work to relax, unwind and do something about myself and I came back to stitching which was about um, I think about nine years ago now almost, about eight and a half and so since then I think I've been stitching pretty much religiously almost with no breaks and interruptions except for maybe a few months in 2022, yes. Um, obviously COVID was um, a break from work for a lot of us, um, so was it for me? So a few months there as well, I, sp I spent stitching a lot. Um, what else can I tell you about myself? Um, so why the green stitcher? You can probably see there's a lot of green around me. Um, I'm also um, obsessed with all things the green color, plants, uh, woods, um, sort of designs to do with the woods, mushrooms, plants. Um, uh, I love green fabric. I love green floss. And I thought, what better to use as my as my nickname for the for the channel and for Instagram? Um, by the way, I'll leave the link for Instagram under the under the video in the description if you want to join in. It's fresh new. There's only a couple of posts there, just sort of doing a little bit of an intro and doing the and giving you a couple of my February um, finishes. Um, Right, what else can I say? Um, so in the eight and a half years of stitching, you can imagine I've done quite a lot. I also frame and finish most of my pieces myself and I've got probably around a hundred at this point. So I wasn't going to do a video of everything that I've finished so far. That would be way too long and it would be hard to sort of pull everything from all the corners of the house. I have things sort of hanging about, um, finished as um, covers of sorts, little boxes and things. So there's quite a lot. I'll probably do a video at some point with my favorite finishes or maybe different types, we'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll show a couple finishes in every video that I make, uh, if I have them somewhere close with me. Uh, so in terms of stitching, I uh, have changed my 
my, my taste in stitching has changed quite a lot in this time. I've started with sort of doing a lot of kits and a lot of um, patterns by Russian designers where you just get like mostly DMC threads and a lot of backstitch, which I still love. Um, and recently in the last couple of years, I've started looking more at sort of samplers and hand dyed threads and hand dyed fabric and more primitive designs of various artists and designers. So there's been a bit of a change and you'll probably see, I'll be showing you the whips in the order of them being started. And my oldest one is about four years now. So you'll probably see sort of the, the change in taste as well. Um, I hope you like what you see. Uh, if you'd like to join in, uh, please subscribe. I'll be happy to have you. Happy to uh, hear from you and hear any comments you, you want to make. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I will list all of the um, names of designers and designs in the description box. If it's an Etsy store sort of pattern where you can buy it um, online, I'll probably just link to it as well, uh, but not for some of the kits, obviously. I think that's about it. What, I'm, what I keep on looking at is my um, Excel spreadsheet with all of my whips. I am um, an office manager as um, as my job, so I'm quite organized in my in my life as well. I like sort of order and knowing where things are and having statistics and that sort of stuff where I know where I'm at in the number of stitches I've done a certain month and when I started things and when I finished and how many I have on the go. And I really like having this sort of um, little chart where I have all of my things. I have a few. I've got one for sort of all of my hand dyed threads and all of my DMCs and other things and my beads and I quite like sort of being neat and organized this way. You can also see my um, cross stitch sort of stash corner in here. I do apologize it's a bit darker today because it's a gloomy day and though I have the lights going it's a bit it's a bit dark but hopefully you'll be able to see everything. Right, let's get to the whips then. And before we do, I want to show you how I store them. Just a second. I'm just leaning over here into the corner. Right, so I keep my whips in this um, fabric basket. I got it sort of from a home store um, sort of shop. And it's got all of them at once. And I love that I can just pull them out whenever. It sits on the floor right next to my desk. I stitch mostly at my desk near my computer and then I use a stand which I'll show you in a second as well uh, if you're curious. I use um, project bags with vinyl um, fronts to store my whips and some of my kitted up uh, plans for the near future. Some of them I, I made myself like this one which I quite like. These are the perfect size for a larger Mill Hill kit. Not the large ones that they've been making recently, like the Sticks collection or the, uh, you know, with the funny, funny animals and the funny linen colors. These are just the standard sort of 15 by 15 centimeters or something. So I made these myself. I'll um, show you the bags that each project is in, again, if you're interested, and then we'll go from there. So, uh, the first project I've got is a Dimensions kit um, that is called Japanese Garden and I've had it since, well I've started the design, not that I've had the kit since then, It's it's been some time uh, between I got it as a gift and started it. So I started it in February 2020. So like I said, it's now four years old and it's my oldest whip at the moment. Oh, and I have 10. I forgot to mention that. I have 10 whips at the moment. Two of them are just about to be finished. So I'm cheating a little bit by showing them today, but that's the time I had to film. So here we are, 10 whips today. Uh, it's the 5th, 6th of March today. Um, so this is my first one. It's the Dimensions kit. I love this design. I love, love, love everything about the Japanese culture and uh, scenery. My sister lives in Japan and has been for a while. Um, we've, we've both been uh, obsessed with anime and music and culture for a very long time since we were teenagers probably and one of her dreams was to move to Japan and work there and live there and 
which she has fulfilled now. And one of the gifts that she gave me one of my birthdays was this kit. Um, I've started it four years ago, just before COVID hit, because I was planning to go see her for the first time there. And I was sort of trying to put the intention of going into, into the design. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. COVID ruined our plans, but that's fine. We'll get to go there someday. Um, and so I keep this in one of the project bags. This particular one I bought off someone on Etsy. I love the, actually, I've sent her my fabrics and she made me um, bags with my own fabrics of my choice. So this is the Japanese wave. And then I've got all of the um, things in here. I've got the floss. Let me just show you a quick one. I've got the floss. I've got the paper pattern. I've got the preview. And then I won't show you this ones in particular because they're all literally the same. I'll just show you what I'm doing with all of my um, threads uh, for the projects I'm working on. I use these um, plastic and felt organizers from Amazon, wherever. Um, they are both used for threads and needles. So you can see here, I organize the threads and also leave the parked needles and I use one needle per color. And it's just, it just makes things easier to work on. You can just pull it when it's, when you only have a few stitches to do, don't have to start a new thread all over again, right? So this is literally how I organize all of my whips. So I won't be showing this anymore in this video. I have another version of them, which is a bit smaller, which is 30 colors. This one is for 50 and I've got quite a few of these going. I think I've got purple and green ones. So that's the Japanese garden. I mostly prefer stitching on um, scroll frames and I'll show you one just in a minute when I get to this design. However, a few of my pieces are on um, hoops, either square ones or rather rectangular ones or round ones. So this is where I am with the Japanese garden. I am almost done. As you can tell, I've finished the left top corner. All of the bottom is done, bottom half completely done. Um, it's got, I think it's on, let me have a look, 72% completed. And I would really love to finish it this year, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I am using all of the kit um, floss and fabric. So this is 16 count, uh, light blue Ada, and it's quite nice and soft as you can see. It's not one of your sort of cardboardy <laughs> hard um, fabrics, you know, the ones they put in the Chinese kit uh, by Dimensions. And then here's my little reminder. I love to obviously match them in theme to the design and it's a little round Fuji with some uh, cherry blossoms. I've got the left uh, corner covered, like I said, and I'm planning to move over to the right and start doing the sky and hopefully, like I said, finish it this year. I have been thinking to move it to a scroll frame as well to make it a bit easier. I am not very good with stitching with one hand. I've got a bit of a bad wrist. All of my work on the computer uh, is with my right hand. I am also a gamer, a PC gamer as well, not a PlayStation one and, so, and a stitcher. So all of that sort of strains my wrist if I stitch with one hand. So I either have something sort of holding this and I'm doing both hands or I prefer, like I said, scroll frames, um, which you'll probably see it next month if I do anything on it this month on one. My next whip, which is turning two years old in a few days, is a an anchor design. Uh, let me just show you. I've got sort of a picture printed out of it. Um, I couldn't find the kit at the, at the time. They were either out of production or they cost, I don't know, 80, 100 pounds. Um, and so I found a pattern online and I've kitted it up myself and I've been stitching it off that, but it's the sort of the, um, the scanned original pattern. So it's the Poppy Field by Encore. Uh, it's one of the old ones. If you've ever done Encore, you know they might look quite simple and nice and not have that many colors, but they're actually a lot of work. 
they've got lots of fractional stitches so three four three quarter stitches um they've got tiny little french knots they've got a lot of back stitch uh different plies of um of thread in different places which i don't mind any of that it just takes sort of longer to get through them i think and i go a bit slower um, it only has a handful of colors i think there's maybe under 30 27 25 um this one lives in a bag um that i was uh given the same by the same person um asked them to make me a couple with my own fabrics and my stitcher friend um from belarus has the same one with a different background because she loves 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 everything to do with bumblebees and I was um, sort of putting a gift for her uh, together for one of the birthdays and got one of these for her as well. Uh, so like you see, I've got extra, extra skeins of anchor threads to go with the ones that are already on my organizer. And I'm actually quite far along in this as well. Right, so I'm going to try and show you sort of the entirety of what I've stitched so far. It's harder when you have scroll frames, obviously. Um, so I have got about 43% in this. Uh, like I said, I started in March 2022 and here we have the progress. I have absolutely fully finished the left bottom corner. Everything, everything that has to be there. Backstitch, French knots, all of the fractionals, everything. I sort of got into the next quarter a little bit just so I don't have sort of a um an exact edge there and then i've gone up uh towards the left top corner which has proven a bit more boring um with a lot of the same colors and not much red um so i haven't finished it yet um so this one i started on my mom's birthday a few years ago uh, I'm actually stitching it for her. She is a big poppy fan, um, but she wanted specifically a poppy field, not a bouquet of poppies in a vase or in a basket of some sort. She wanted specifically a field. And it's one of the, my probably largest designs started at the moment because it has almost 50,000 stitches. And like I said, I'm only 44% in, not even half yet. I don't think I'll finish it this year, if I'm being honest with you. There's still 26,500 left. It's quite a lot for me on a design that is sort of... It's not monochromatic, but it has few colors um, and sort of few color schemes, right? It's only your beige, your green and your red. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm stitching it though, I forgot to say. I'm stitching it on 32 count uh, linen by uh, Witchelt. Um, I love their linen very, very much. It's nice and stiff. This one actually is quite soft and it's your ivory 101 cream, whatever, sort of light um, and not very, um, not very thick and not very starchy. Like I said, I quite like it. Um, so I'm hoping to work on it this year at some point. Um, I would like to finish it sooner than later, obviously, because it's for my mom. I was hoping to do it for this March because it's uh, an anniversary of hers, but it's not meant to be, unfortunately. But I will, I will go on and I will finish it someday for sure. My next whip is one of my favorites and one of my favorite designers as well. It is, let me just show you have the booklet with all the patterns because there's a few um it is 12 days of christmas by stony creek i love their designs for whatever reason though i'm not a religious person i cannot stop stitching um sort of the birth of of christ designs the three kings designs and the 12 days of christmas designs i don't know why they just they just speak to me i just love the colors i just love the theme there's a certain magic around all of that. So yeah, here we go, 12 days of Christmas. I have already stitched a Stony Creek, which is one of my biggest sort of grandest designs. I've framed it really nicely as well, if I can say so myself, uh, but yeah. Uh, so this one is um, giving you two options. You can either do it as separate pieces. You can do the central element as a design in a frame and then do sort of um, ornaments out of the rest of them. I have decided I'm going to make it as it is on the front cover. So I'm doing everything as one piece and I'm going to frame it in a frame and put up somewhere in the house for the holidays. 
Um, I'm doing everything um, uh, as the as the pattern tells me in terms of the materials and the colors. So it's meant to be stitched on 28 count witchelt linen in color water lily, which like I said, I do prefer 32, especially in witchelt. Uh, so I've kept the color, I've just swapped the count and this one is on one of my favorite scroll frames that I bought from a local um, crafter. And here's where I am today. I can't show you a bit of the fr uh, of the central element, just because it's set to <laughs> to um, for me to do the next day. So, Twelve Days of Christmas was started in in December of 2022, sort of at the very end of it. I was doing this um, Christmas or holiday starts thing that December and. So far, I've completely finished the central element, as you can see. I have completely finished three out of 12 days. And technically, I am halfway through. I'm 50% in, which is fantastic. I would absolutely love to finish it this year. And so the plan is um, to stitch one day a month. Uh, so I'm currently in March and I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to do day number five in March. Uh, so I finished the central element last year and then I thought instead of doing the same little version of the partridge in the left top corner, I'll just move over to day two, start with the turtle doves and then go all the way around and then my last piece will be the partridge in the left top corner. This way I will break apart like stitching partridges in a row and then it's sort of coming full circle. You start with partridge, you finish with one, I don't know. I quite like that. Um, I'm not sure how well the color is showing on camera. It's sort of this really light green. It's not as um, light as it is on the preview. I'm just trying to find it now. I think it's showing it quite light. Um, and as you can tell in real life, this is much um, darker of a green. I really, really love this. I am enjoying stitching on it every month. And one of the squares is about um, 12 to 1500 stitches, which is a nice amount for me to do. And then I still sort of miss it and want to come back to it the next month. I've got little birds needle minder here with some chickadees, which I love. And this one lives in, um, I call it a winter bag. I'm not sure why, but it's sort of, these colors sort of look like winter frosty background with some winter flowers on it not sure why um and i love this and i've got all of the extra um sort of special uh colors and beads here i've got the um what have i got gentle art weeks that works i've got a couple of um glisten gloss metallics which uh go in blends and then there's a pack of beads which is Sort of these large red beads that will be used as um, berries in a few of them. I haven't used the beads just yet. I'm just trying to sort of, because there aren't many of them, I'm thinking I'll finish the whole design first, all of the days, all of the things, and then I'll just do quick beading at the very end. I have a design that has much more beading and I'll show you I do beading as I go and I haven't had to scroll it yet so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. But I've asked a few people and they told me to just use like a thick, nice um, hand towel to roll in between the layers of your fabric on the scroll frame. So I'm going to try that, but I'll show you that in a second. So 12 days of Christmas, hopefully finishing this year, like I said, 50% in. I actually have another anchor uh, design in my stash and it's another kit. And it lives in this lovely, gorgeous, fern bag that I've got made again by the same person. Absolutely adore. This is my favorite bag I ever had, obviously because it's green. As you can tell by now, <laughs> this is why um, I chose the green stitcher. So um, I have wanted to stitch a map of the UK for a while now, or of England at least. And I haven't been able to find a design that really um, uh, spoke to me until I found this sampler on eBay. So it's an English sampler, sampler by Anchor and the way it's designed is you have a lovely frame of white and red roses all around the edge 
and then you have the outline of the map of England in backstitch and then you have tiny little um, sides for some of the bigger cities which I absolutely love. Fell in love with it, bought it and started it pretty soon after that. I think it was started, let me have a look, I want to say May 2023? English sampler... Yes, that's right, May 2023. Right, I started it on the day that I moved to UK five years prior to that, if that makes sense. Um, so on the anniversary of me moving to, to the UK. And I have started on the um, fabric from the kit, which is 18 count oatmeal Ada, which I absolutely love. And I think it's perfect for this. I did not need to, to swap it for a linen or an even weave. I really like that I kept what was in the kit. And then I'm using all of the called for in the kit colors, which are anchor as well, obviously. And there's going to be, let me just pull it out, um, there's going to be one Krynik in there as well. I think it's only being used as a blend with um, some of the yellow shades for the letters and it's a blending filament 002. Um, again, this one probably needs um, some work uh, this year. I've only stitched on it a couple of times last year but I really, really loved it and I do want to come back. This is what I have done so far. And this is the whole of the bottom border, edge to edge. I won't have to do any more. And then I've started the coastline in the south and done one of the sides. I thought this was Stonehenge when I looked at it. And then I had another look at the map and there's another one for Stonehenge. And I couldn't find online what this relates to. If you're from UK and you know what this place is can you can you comment below i'd really love to hear from you it looks lovely i'd love to go and see that absolutely so it's stitching up absolutely wonderfully i absolutely love it this is this is my only design so far that is not um on a cross stitch app so to cross stitch i use cross stitch saga app which lets you um, upload your cross stitch designs in a specific format which is not PDF unfortunately and then you can I think it's very similar to Pattern Keeper where you can highlight a, a particular color on the whole design or in a particular area it gives you the number of stitches it gives you the um, number of threads you need in terms of just the itemized list as well as how many meters or yards or skeins whatever you will need to stitch the design um, so for the designs where I can, and if you buy one from a Russian designer, most of the time you will get this type of file that you can use for this app. However, PDFs or sort of paper patterns would have to be like manually um, drawn into the program to turn it into this uh, format, um, which makes it a bit more difficult uh, to get and then some of them I end up just doing with paper, which this is what I'm doing with this one. I'm just using a highlighter to colour in what I've done, counting my stitches just out of curiosity to see how much I've done and for the statistics. But because I don't have the finished um, pattern uh, in that app and I don't know the total number of stitches, I don't know how far along I am or what uh, percentage I have or how much I have left, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, still, this is one of my favorite designs for sure. I really love. I would really love to work some more on it this year. Um, maybe not finish it, but definitely get it. Definitely get more on it done. Um, then uh, one of the um, kits I bought probably already here. I think I might have brought it back from Belarus, but no, I think it's in English, so it must be. Um, must have been purchased somewhere here. It is um, an Alyssa kit and it's a field of um, a field of tulips which is quite lovely. I'm not very big into stitching flowers as you'll probably see. I'm more into anything to do with Japan like I said um, anything to do with Christmas I love a lot with the forest with mushrooms like I said I do have a few flowery designs um, this one's meant to be stitched on a white Ada from the kit which I swapped um, the floss here is 
a um, a Russian uh, manufacturer called Gamma. Um, I am um, they're fully cotton, the same as DMC, and they are quite similar in sort of like the silkiness and the shine. And I quite like them actually, um, as opposed to there's another brand that um, I think they make in Saint Petersburg, which are a bit drier and sort of more papery. Um, these are quite nice. The project lives in this lovely, lovely bag, uh, which is one of my favorite prints. And it's a dark navy background with some flowers and greens on it. Again, this is not made by me. This is the one from the, from the lot of um, the ones I got made for myself with my own fabrics, if that makes sense. And then this one doesn't actually have much in it yet. I have started it um, only last year, I think. Let me see. Field of Tulips, July 2023. Um, it's all a bit wrinkled from the hope and I'm going to wash it and dedicate a scroll frame to it but this is what I've got so far I don't like sort of all of these lines and um, wrinkles that hoops leave if your design is larger than the space that fits into the hoop that's why I prefer the scroll, scroll frames and then it gives me the space to go sort of any direction I want not having to change the position of the hoops but uh, I think it was an urgent start that I needed to do at that point uh, I ran out of scroll frames I think so I had to use whatever I had and these were the Nerge uh, rectangular plastic hoops uh, so this one's only stitched um, I've only got, I think I've got a thousand in it. So normally when I start a design, I don't like to put it aside until I've done a thousand stitches in it. So um, yeah, I think I've done a thousand and it's at 11%. Um, it's being stitched on 32 count Witchelt linen in color Star Sapphire. Um, again, I'm not sure how it's showing on camera. I know the camera doesn't like greens and blues. Um, it's a very, very pale turquoise, I would say. Super pale. Um, I quite like how the colors are showing. The only thing is, and this is probably the reason why it got paused. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell. So the colors on the actual design. Let me just fold it so I can hold it better for you. This one is actually proper witch out one. You can sort of see it doesn't bend much it's quite a stiff fabric but i do love it so i'll be able i'll probably be able to show you you can see quite clearly and i started from the center the colors are quite different from the preview which got me a little bit concerned and not disappointed but you know you do fall in love with the design on the preview right and so when you get to stitching it and it's a very different shade of the colors that you see um, it might be a little bit due to me choosing a different color fabric as opposed to white um, but I'm not sure I do like it anyways I'm not sure that I'll have it framed and put up in my own home I might just gift it to my mom I just need to check with her that she actually wants it I have a on that that's another thing about me I am a serial and seasonal stitcher so if I have a design, most likely I'll have at least a pair for it in my stash, if not a trio or a whole series or all of the seasons, if it's a seasonal one. Um, so I have a field of clover with um, chamomile, I think, one of those, or daisy or something that sort of goes with this one. And so I'm thinking to start the other one once I'm done with this. And like I said, check with my mom if she wants them and then I would gift them to her when they're done and she can put them up in her home. Um, as for plans for this one, um, to stitch it at least a little bit this year, um, I would love to finish it. There's only about 9,000 stitches left, which is not that much and I could totally do it. Um, I don't know. I'll see. I have... I have made plans for myself this year, as I do, as I have been doing for the last couple of years, and I filmed them for the Russian channel, and I've, um, and I've done sort of as 
I planned for the first couple of weeks in January. And normally I'm quite good with I'm quite good with sticking to my plans and I make them and then I stick to them at least till about end of May, June. And then I start having slight variations, but not sort of completely deviating from them. This year somehow there's been a bit of a change in my thinking, I guess, and I've abandoned my plans like third week in January and I'm just stitching on whatever. That's why I can't say if I'm going to finish something anytime soon or not. Hopefully I will, but like I said, we'll see. So this one was started in August 2023 and this is my first uh, and so far only, but definitely not the last, Mirabilia. So I have I have been I have seen Mirabilias before, obviously. They're everywhere. Um I have seen others stitching the mermaids, the queens, the the reindeer, the Santas, all all sorts of characters. And I I love them and I love the way they look. Um for some reason they never sort of grabbed my attention enough so I wanted to buy and stitch one until this one. So I found a few designs which I've put in a collection of my own which I called ladies in kimonos. They are not in kimonos most likely, however they look to me as if they are and as I am obsessed with all things Japanese, like I said, I decided to create a, like a little series of my own. So the first one in the series I've decided to stitch is called Blossom and it's MD180 and she is absolutely lovely. She's got loads of beads, lots of flowery patterns and I absolutely love her. She was meant to be stitched on 32 count peaceful purple witchout linen. However, and I did buy it and I did buy exactly this color and this um, count. Uh, however, when I was getting ready to start something else and dyeing some fabric for it, I have given this piece a little bit of a dunk in there for just 15 minutes, but it came out a different sort of shade, a bit of a mottled effect on it. I'll show you just in a second. So the, the, back, um, the background is going to be different. This one doesn't have any treasures as far as I remember. <clears throat> no, I'm just looking at the key in the back has one blend and a few colors of beads, no treasures, no crying none of that. Um, however, I've changed some of it. So this gorgeous lady is being stitched on this gorgeous fabric, which I absolutely love. It's just been taken off a scroll frame. Um, that's why it's a bit wrinkled again. So this is the Peaceful Purple by Witchelt. Um, dyed just for 15 minutes in a writ um, liquid dye in color aubergine, I believe, or eggplant, whichever, whichever way you, whichever way you call it. And so, actually, I'm really far along with this one because I absolutely love it, and I do want to finish it in the next few months. This one has got about um, how much has it got? It has about 20,000 stitches overall and I am more than halfway in and I only have 9,000 left to do. Let me say it like this. Can't do the calculations. My spreadsheet um, sh sort of shows me how much I did last year if I started last year and then just what I did to, like this year. And so it's a bit, yeah. Um, so she is absolutely lovely. I absolutely adore her and stitching on her has been an absolute pleasure. So what I've done here, let me just show you bottom up. What I've done here is I started beading as I go because I looked at the number of beads to be used and there's a lot. And I thought, I don't want to leave it all to the end. It's going to be really boring and tedious to do all the beading at once. And so this is the one where I need to find a thick, nice hand towel to layer between my fabric and the design so I can scroll it on a scroll frame. Uh, I've completely finished the bottom uh, skirt with these orange flowers, including the beads, like I said. I've done all of this with the roses and there's a similar section here. I've done sort of the middle part with the sleeve. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it here, but there's a lot of B5200 on all of the edges. I'm not sure if it's technically fur or some other 
edging that they use in this particular dress but I thought I think it was like 2000 white stitches I thought it would be way too boring to just do white and I've added I think I have it somewhere here maybe not um basically I've added so there's two ply of um of white cotton and I've added one strand of 032 blending filament crinic into it so it glistens ever so slightly I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on camera you can see it quite well in real life and it's just a tiny gentle glimmer um, of this sort of iridescent crinic in the white I absolutely love her I am in love with Mirabilia now that I've done half of one um, I've got two more ladies uh, that go in this series of mine and um, I'll show you those whenever I start them I've got another one that I think I will buy at some point, but I haven't just yet. Um, I absolutely love her and she is such a pleasure to stitch. Um, it just goes so fast because you have such big chunks of the same color. Oh, and here's one of my favorite needle minders that I made out of a pin. I think it just says just one more stitch in with turquoise and purple and it just perfectly fits the mood it perfectly matches how i feel about her uh, which is i just want to make one more stitch one more stitch i have been putting her aside for a couple months though i've really wanted to stitch on her and i think i'm not going to do that anymore i am just finishing my last whip that i'll show you now it's almost done again cheating and showing it to you today as a whip um but i'm going to finish this one and then i'm going to put her on the same scroll frame like I said, I have a limited amount of them and then I will hopefully finish her in the last couple of months. I really, really want to. I want to try and do her skin in petite point. Uh, I think that's the way it's called. Uh, you know, the tiny stitches, um, one over one, two over one. I'm not sure yet how I'll do it. I have a design in mind that I want to start in the next few months that has a lovely lady on it that has a lot of skin showing. I've seen other people stitching designs of the same designer with uh, this method and then the skin looks like really smooth and almost like photorealistic um, and so I'm hoping to try this method on a smaller design which is this and then if it works and I love it and it's not too tedious to do I will use the same on the bigger design. Uh, this is 32 count linen, like I said, and that design will be stitched on the same, just a different color. So I think that's quite realistic. Right, the next one is another Dimensions kit. I do love Dimensions kits. I have gotten rid of a few recently, a few larger ones, but I do love them. And I quite like that they use different plies of thread when you stitching on them you have the variation of back stitch and half stitch and full crosses and sort of yeah uh, you've got the variety and it's it never gets boring I've done a few I've got a few more in my stash and this is my second one in my whips and this is um, purity strength and truth um, it's not a gold collection one it's just a regular one but a full sort of size not a mini and I started it on my on my husband's birthday for him. Uh, we both love, like I said, everything to do with Japan and just in, in general Asia. We'd love to go visit Japan and Korea and India and a lot of different places. And I felt like this theme and also the color scheme would perfectly fit in our new home. Um, so we have sort of this pale matcha uh, green color walls in the living room, sort of like this. And then some of our furniture in the living room is literally this dark wine red and then the tan sort of color here. So I think um, this will go perfectly in the living room. This one is lives in a bag that I made. We went to a tiny trip to Whitby a couple of years ago and I found a lovely, lovely fabric shop there and brought a few pieces of fabric with me that I really wanted to turn into project bags and I have made, I think, one so far. Um, it's this lovely fabric with gold um, that shows a library. I do love to read as well. That's one of my other hobbies besides stitching and gaming. Um, and so... At some point, and we've only lived in this house about nine months now, we will have sort of a library at home and 
We both love books and manga. You will probably see somewhere behind me, maybe not now, there's a whole collection of manga right above on the top shelf behind me. Uh, right, so this design, like I said, started from my husband. It was started in September 2023, so it's quite fresh. And I've changed the uh, fabric in it. It's supposed to be 14 count beige Ada. I have kept the count and I've changed the fabric. So this is another design that is on a hoop. Um, this is again one of the Nerd um, rectangular ones. And I've gotten quite far with this one, especially taking into account how recent the start was. So here I am. I have done about, let's have a look, about four and a half thousand stitches on it so far. I am on 33%, which is great. And I am trying to do sort of the bottom half first and then go to the top one. The fabric is 28 count Quaker cloth uh, in color mocha, which I absolutely love. And I can't show you now, I'm not sure I have the original fabric from the kit anymore. It perfectly matches, literally like almost shade to shade, it matches the fabric from the kit. I just wanted to have easier time with doing all of the thicker plies, sort of five, six strands of cotton here. So I wanted something a bit softer and a bit with, with a bit more give than the stiff A that they have in the kits. I really, really love how it's turning out. I got a bit bored of all of the beige tan colors in here but I'm hoping to come back to it quite soon. Um, again, like I said, I've been trying out using more hoops and I'm not loving it 100%. So I either need to order a few more scroll frames, which is an option, or I need to finish a couple of things so this one can go on a scroll frame. I think it will go a bit faster and easier then. So the way I normally stitch, um, I use a wooden frame and I'll show you that again in a few minutes. Um, it sort of sits on my desk and I stitch at my desk most of the time. But the way the legs are made, you can transform it, make it a bit taller and stitch on your lap when you're on the sofa, which I do in the evenings when we're watching uh, TV with my husband. And then I love to just swap you know just go from table to sofa and back and forth with the same project that i've done sort of during the day and then go on in the evening and that gives me more time in the day on the same thing if that makes sense i don't have to swap things then and i have no i have a holder for the for the for the hoops that attaches to my desk however i have nowhere to attach it where i sit near the sofa and watch the tv so um, I either have to do it only at my table or I have to, like I said, uh, put it on a scroll frame, which I think I will do. I love, I love doing that. And then I won't have any marks left by, by these hoops. So quite like how it's turning out. Again, there's a lot of different plies of color. There's like three, five, four, six probably as well. And there's some lovely three ply backstitch in the flowers sort of to show the stems and the branches and I really love how it's turning out. I would love to finish it this year, that would be ideal. Um, but again, we'll see how it goes. We'll see where the inspiration takes me. Right, um, next one is a tiny start of 2024. I think that's all of my sort of um, whips from years previous to 2024. Next one is a tiny little, well, you know how they go. It's a Dimensions Petite um, Gold. And it's this lovely design with um, with the violin and some, I, I think it's holly, I'm not sure. Well, with some leaves and greens, right? Um, I've done two of the series. I've done the uh, mistletoe. I've done the French horn. I am doing this one now and there's one more left which is the bells which I recently decided to not stitch and sold the kit as it was never started. Um, one thing I'll say about this is I wish I never started on 18 count as it was meant to be. I do not like stitching on 18 count anymore These because it's two over two, it's two over one. Yeah, it's two over one on Ada. The fabric is quite stiff, the stitches are quite 
bulky and they don't come out that neat as they do on 32 count and they annoy me a bit to be honest with you i wish i had started it on like a 32 count linen or something but the series is almost done i just want to finish this one and be done with it so what i've got on here so far so where i have got on here so far and i do apologize for the way it looks it's a bit of a frankenstein situation so the fabric was so tiny it wouldn't fit into any of my nerd hoops i had to sew on additional pieces of fabric that was just in my stash leftovers uh, to be able to have a bit more of a stretch here and i still i'm not loving it and i think i still should have put it in a tiny scroll frame <laughs> uh but again i needed i wanted to start it right there and then didn't have the time and i just went with this so this is 18 count ivory ada from the kit which again like i said i'm not loving stitching on it um this is stitched in all of the threads from the from the kit so they're just the dimensions threads um this one doesn't have many sort of uh thicker bigger number of uh plies in your in your stitches i think the biggest one is maybe three on in some of the half stitches but still i've done some of the uh violin uh, I think most of the greens if not all of them so this one was started actually on the 1st of January 2024 I have stitched about uh, how much is that about 1600 stitches on this so far and I am on I am on 34% so this is a third of the design done and I have just a little over 3000 left I do want to finish it this year as well just not to drag it into the next one I am considering um, taking it out of here, taking all of the extra bits off, washing it, ironing it, and then putting it on a scroll frame. So that's another thing about the way I stitch. I do prefer to wash and iron my fabric before and after I'm done with it. Um, I do it before because a lot of the times, you know, the fabric comes in here as well, I think you can see. It comes with folds from the way it was put in the kit or in your sort of bundle when you buy just the fabric without the kit so i want to iron these wrinkles out and then i wanted to just uh, shrink as much as it can right then and there before i even start so if i'm doing a lot of backstitch or any sort of cording or anything it doesn't get all ruined after it's been finished and shrunk after the wash so i do this and then obviously when i'm done with it i give it a little bit of a refresher uh, mostly because mine take a while. Like I said, most of my designs are stitched at least a few months, if not a few years. I do love to have a few on the go at the same time. So they do end up being not, not dirty, obviously, but you know, you do stitch with your hands. There is a bit of a residue that is left on the fabric. So it's nice to give it a bit of a refresher. That's all. Right. And then the last two whips I have so um one of them doesn't live anywhere it's a tiny little design um it's a pattern from uh, mandarinks i'll leave the etsy shop a link below however i don't think she has it there i got in touch with her via a messenger and she sent it to me as a free pattern uh, i didn't find it on the um in the shop but you might be able to just message her on etsy and ask for it as well so i'll insert the preview here it's a cat um that is sort of a lullaby cat i think she's got a whole series of them that are based on the um different styles different artists have so i think she's got like a van gogh one and um, a klimt one and a few other ones i'm not sure who this one is whose art this one is imitating so to say but i really love it i love how it has these little tiny um star sequence on the back i love that it has beading i do a lot of mill hill kits um little ones and bigger ones as well i do love to mix my threads and my beads and then i've got this much done so far let me show you like this and i do love perforated paper a lot and i do not stitch on plastic canvas i only use paper instead and so this is 14 count brown perforated paper i have uh, changed the number of uh, flosses I use for the stitches from two to three to give it a better coverage. I love doing it 
this way. I've done a few projects that were meant for plastic canvas with two uh, strands and I used three instead on perforated paper. And then um, instead of white B5200, uh, I've used um, this silver metallic thread from, um, I think it's Upper Soir, if I'm not mistaken. Same with the gold. I haven't finished it yet. I'm almost done. I'm hoping to finish it today or tomorrow. But like I said, I'm cheating and showing you 10 whips today. Um, it has Mill Hill bits as well. Well, the design is... Um, the design calls for Preciosa beads, which are Czech beads. I'm not sure I can get them in the UK. I don't have any in my stash except for one cream color that I bought like a whole bag of at some point in my life. I do have a lot of Mill Hill beads though and I do have access to them. So I just pulled a few colors of my own stash and they're all uh, these, the ones with the shiny center. So I've got the purple, the gold and this lovely sort of reddish orange which I love and I've got a little black cat needle minder I do I forgot to say this I um I do have two black cats uh, they are absolutely lovely we just had them for a few months now but we love them already and they are baby cats they are only I think they're turning about seven months today um and uh, they're brother and sister and they are being very naughty when I'm filming or when anything has to do with stitching they love to sit under the frame and try to steal my threads with my needles so I have to watch myself and sort of all of my stitching has to be hidden or the door to the hobby room closed and I have got sort of organizers and boxes where things are hidden so they don't steal them so yeah uh, black cat needle minder uh, to honor my black cats and my last whip but definitely not last in my heart because I stopped everything mid Feb and started this uh, because I've loved it and I wanted to stitch it very much and I think it's beautiful I have recently really gotten into primitive stitching, especially the Shepherd's Bush designs. And so I purchased this pattern of a Christmas stocking, which they have plenty of. They have maybe 15 different designs. And I feel like everyone can find one that they like for themselves. So this one is called Jeffrey's stocking. It's going to be Maria's stocking when it's done. Uh, and I have changed a few things here and before I tell you what I'll tell you a bit about the design so I think the reason I chose it for myself is I think he looks like a magician um, and I do love all things magic Harry Potter and all of the other things so I've had a look at a lot of their stockings um, I also don't like designs that are too girly if that makes sense I'm not a very girly girl I do love my my makeup and my jewelry and stuff but I do dress a bit more on the I don't know sporty side I'm not sure um so I feel like it's more unisex and not very girly which I like I love 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 the cape I fell in love with the cape and the shirt and the colors in those I love the hat I love the beard absolutely and then obviously the rest of it is amazing as well love the sheep I have done a uh, shepherd's bush with buttons that look like sheep, which was absolutely amazing. I'll show it to you um, in one of the other in one of the other videos. So what I've done with this is it is meant to be stitched on eighteen count linen, um, one over two with uh, pearl cottons um, number five. They use DMCs, Weeks That Works, and Classic Color Works pearls. So I don't have either the pearls or the linen in my stash. I didn't want to splurge too much. And so I've decided that instead I was going to do a, a smaller count. And I was going to take all of the threads that are in the key with their moulinet, so the regular thickness threads. Um, and stitch it into um, strands instead. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, ask me and I'll try to explain a bit better. So I took 28 count cashew linen and I'm stitching two over two with the called for colors. So the DMCs, the classic color works, the wigs they works, but in the regular moulinet. Let me just show you. If it, maybe that will make more sense. 
uh, just your regular colors. I've got them all in this on this ring. There's only 10 specialty threads. So you've got five classical works and five weeks they works. Um, they are absolutely gorgeous. And this is literally my favorite color palette. So these sort of um, olive greens and wine reds and purples. I could stitch like all of my designs in these. Uh, I absolutely love them. And it uses, like I said, a couple of DMC threads. I've already finished one, so I won't show you, but I've got a couple of DMCs. These are just my leftovers from other kits. I will show you, if you're interested someday, how I store all of my things, uh, because for me, organization is important. And so I've taken some time throughout the years living in the UK to organize everything and make it as comfortable for myself as possible. I've got the uh, embellishment pack as well. It's got loads of lovely beads, buttons from Just Another Button Company, and some glass embellishments like the, what are they called? There's a leaf here. I can see something else. Absolutely lovely. And so what I've done so far, and this lives in the tiniest, tiniest little bag. Um, which is uh, the baby sister of the bag and that 12 days of Christmas lives in uh, which is this again for some reason it looks like winter to me so what I've done with this is I'm almost finished so I won't show you the whole thing because it's on the scroll frame but I'll show you the frame that I use as well so I use this wooden frame I think this is the best way to probably show it that I bought on Etsy. I believe it's made in Ukraine. I bought it way before the war or any of the, the other things started. So I have had it, I think for about four years at least, maybe more. Um, I absolutely love it. It's a game changer for me. Using two, two hands to stitch on a scroll frame has been my favorite way of stitching since I got it. So it's got two legs like this. And this, it's quite flexible. It doesn't have another sort of uh, piece of wood in between the legs, as you can see. So you just um, add whichever frame, whichever size that you want, and whichever brand that you want as well, obviously. It just needs to have um, right size holes on the sides to be able to attach to the stand. Sorry, a bit finicky with this. So here's my progress on Jeffrey's stocking. Well, Maria's stocking in my house. And I'm almost done. Like I said, I'm literally on 88 or some something like that percent. I absolutely love the way it's turning out to be. So like I said, 28 count linen. Um, this is just natural color, 52 or something. And I'm using two strands of Moulinet threads um, over two and um, closing every stitch as I go to show the variegation. And I absolutely love it. And the only other thing I've changed I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Let me try. Right. You might not see it uh, so easily. The color of the beard and the sheep is a bit lighter on mine because it wasn't showing uh, if I followed the key. Um, and I've changed it to... So the sheep is stitched in Ecru and then the beard is 3865 DMC. And then also the design on the preview has Shepherd's Watch writing and next to the Shepherd. And I've changed it to Happy Holidays in a similar font. Just using two plies of 1270. I think it's a rum raisin from the, from the key as well. Absolutely love it. Absolutely gorgeous. I am so, so happy I'm stitching it. Finally not putting aside things that I want to do for the plans that I made. Um, I am absolutely in love. This is definitely not my last stocking by them. I actually bought another pattern already to stitch for my husband. Um, maybe we'll do some for my cat someday. Who knows? So this is it, I think. This is my 10 whips at the moment. Like I said, beginning of March. Um, I might have forgotten to tell you something about myself. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll answer anything I can. I'm hoping to be making these videos about once a month to just show you my progress during that month. And for the first few months, probably making another video in the middle of the month to show you some of the things I've done before. Um, like I said, I sew a little bit 
I frame my own pieces, I finish my own pieces, uh, just as we already said here, I'll show you two, which I love very, very much, and I have done a few years ago, and they are finished in a way that's also sort of useful besides being absolutely beautiful. So I have these two, like you, like you saw, wooden round uh, boxes from Ikea. I'm not sure if they carry them anymore. I have had a look when I went there last time and I couldn't see them, but like I said, I had, I've had these for a few years now. So they come in this light sort of pine, uh, shade of pine. I have stained them in dark green or grass green. I have stitched two wreaths by Kazuko Oki from this lovely book, The Cross Stitch Garden, that was gifted to me by my friend from Belarus, which I'm really grateful for because I'm in love. This primitive style with these flowery and sort of herbal motifs, absolutely amazing. And there's a lot of lovely patterns here and I haven't, I haven't finished everything I wanted to. So I might do one of these someday as well. I love, I'm not a big fan of flowers, like I said, but I do love wreaths and I love sort of just meadows and collection of wildflowers more than just your garden flowers. So two wreaths from that book. The first one is this, which is just wildflowers, which I love. And I used DMC as, um, called for in the pattern and this is 32 count white chocolate uh, linen by Witchild. Like I said, my favorite fabric. And then I just finished it with a bit of um, padding to make it sort of nice and soft as you can see and added this lovely jute um, thread around it. And then, oh, I'll show you what I keep there in a second as well. And then the other one, and this is my favorite of the two, is this one. And it has all of the flowers. Again, these are just wildflowers with their names. And this one is on 32 count, uh, witch out linen in color. Either it's mocha or it's... Oh, there's another good color there. Lamb's wool. Um, one of those. I'm not sure now. But I absolutely love it as well. Again, it's finished exactly the same way. It's got a bit of a padding. Um... If you've seen these boxes, you know there's room, sort of. There's probably a good inch or more um, in the top to insert something, a picture, a cross stitch, whatever. If you can find them in Ikea or somebody selling them on Facebook or wherever you are and you do want to finish something in it, I feel like it's a really nice way of putting your stitching to use. Um, and also they're just really handy and they have a lot of space inside. So two of these lovely wreaths. And then what I keep in them is my, these are my leftovers of kits. So these are my DMC threads, not my main uh, color palette that I keep in the chest of drawers right here. I'll show you that some other time. So I keep these DMCs on color cards, um, like you do your hand dyed threads, but I just, keep my DMCs this way so I put the uh, name of the brand the number and then just put them here I like I said I used to do a lot of kits which had DMC threads and then using the color chart or the key depending I would just sort them afterwards and then I could have these lovely leftovers and use them for other designs so I have quite a lot um, as I've collected them through the years and then the other one the same exact way I keep the leftovers of my dimensions threads as you know if you stitch dimensions a lot of their designs um, well all of their threads are sort of custom dyed for them you can't just go out and buy them and some of the designs that are um, really old and out of production that I was absolutely in love with I was hoping to someday collect enough threads from the other kids to just stitch using the chart um, from the internet. And then I think I have a tiny little um, ring of anchor and I have a tiny little ring of owl forest threads, which I've only stitched one design so far, but I have quite a few more in my stash. I think this is it. I'll probably 
be finishing up on this. I hope you liked my first floss tube um, and you um, want to stay and see some more. I am hoping to see you very soon. I am happy that I finally did it and filmed the video. I hope you like what you see and we'll see each other again soon. Have lovely stitching and I'll see you soon.